You know, when you step back and think about it, the process of buying a stereo system should be fun. After all, we're talking about acquiring the gear that makes the music you love sound awesome. And yet for many enthusiasts, this process can not only be intimidating, but outright stressful. And it's for many different reasons. If you're new to this, then it's easy to feel completely overwhelmed by all the different options on the market today. And then as you do your research, you will find many conflicting opinions over what's good and what's not good. And then to make matters even worse, most of us can't actually listen to the gear that we're interested in before making a buying decision, meaning that there's this almost unhealthy reliance on the opinions of other people for making expensive decisions that are highly personal in nature. Which is why today I'm going to try and help you out by telling you all about five things that you should be aware of as you go about purchasing audio gear today in 2021. And the whole point is to help simplify this process and to keep your head grounded as you go about your audio journey. So hopefully some of you will find some use in today's video. So let's get started. Okay, so let's kick this off by going over smart ways to purchase audio gear, starting with new components. Whenever you're purchasing something new, you want to get it from a company that offers some kind of a return policy. Whether it's 14 days, 30 days, or whatever, the whole point is to put yourself in a situation to where you have this risk-free opportunity of trying out something in your home and with the media that you're familiar with. And this is important for the following reason. There is no replacement for first-hand experience. It doesn't matter how long you've been an audiophile for or what people have to say at forums or in their reviews. The bottom line is you never know how you're going to react to something until you try it for yourself. And companies that offer these trial periods tend to facilitate that important experience. Next, let's move on and talk about how to go about building a stereo system if you have no experience whatsoever. And by no experience, I mean you don't even know the kind of sound it is that you're interested in because you've heard nothing. All you know is that you just want to build a good stereo system. There's a lot of people out there in this position and if that's you, I would advise the following. First, as with anybody else, you want to set a budget. Now, once you come up with that budget, this is when you want to start selecting components that interest you. And the trick here is to come up with two components at a given price point that have a reputation for offering a completely different sound. Let me give you an example. So here you are and you say, I want a set of bookshelf speakers in and around the $600 price point. Well, if that's you, then I would recommend to buy the ELAC DBR62s as well as the Triangle Bro 3s. The reason being is both products are accessible, both are known for giving you a great value for the money, and both are known for giving you a completely different presentation. You buy them at the same time, you try them out in your home, and as you listen to them, this will help to inform what kind of sound it is that you prefer. Will you end up liking the more balanced and warm sound of the Elax, or will you prefer the more forward and lively sound of the triangles? The best thing is, once you get this experience, you can use it as you move on in your audio journey. Now, the key thing here is to not use and abuse the trial period. You don't want to try out tons of different gear and return most of it. Instead, what you want to do is to narrow down your search to two components with the intention of keeping one of them. Because if everybody abused this policy, then we'd all lose because then the price of hi-fi would go up. Next, moving on, let's talk about what it's like to purchase expensive audio gear. I'm talking about components that retail for many thousands of dollars a piece. So this is when you may lose the opportunity to try it out risk-free. And that's because many companies are just flat out not willing to risk a thousand bucks or more just because you decided you didn't like it. So this is usually what has to happen. When you're in that kind of a range, you want to get a relationship with a good retailer. People who have a lot of experience with components like that because they can help you out. They can provide useful advice. And if you live close to them, this is the best case scenario, you can take your equipment to the shop, most of them allow that, and some of them will even allow you to take home their gear to your place, that way you can experience it in your own room, like say, over the weekend. Now, if you live far away from these locations, this is when it could get a little bit more challenging, but many retailers have dealer demos, or basically open box models that they can sell at a discount, while at the same time still providing you with a warranty, and this will help to minimize risk if you still wanna buy something from them them again with that service and support. But this leads me to another great way to purchase hi-fi, which is buying used. 
So I am a huge proponent of buying used audio gear. In fact, that's how I gained most of my experience as an audiophile. Now the big advantage here is that you can really maximize what you can get for your money. For example, let's say you have $2,000 to spend and you want to buy an amplifier. Now sure, you could buy a pretty sweet brand new amplifier for that kind of money, complete with warranty and full service and support. However, when you take the same amount of money and apply it towards the used market, this is when you can get an amplifier that would normally retail for anywhere between three to four thousand dollars which is pretty sweet obviously this is going to be a great way to go if you're somebody who's in the process of discovering what your sound is and you don't want to use and abuse trial periods and it's also going to be great for people who are just having fun with the process of trying out different hi-fi gear but you don't want to take a bath every time you buy something new only to lose a lot of money when you go to sell it used now there are many different ways to go about purchasing audio gear you have dedicated dedicated sites like Audiomart, Audiogon, and Hi-Fi Shark, which coagulates a lot of this information. And then you have other resources like forums. You have different Hi-Fi retailers that usually have used or B-Stock gear to sell to you. And then you also have regular listing sites like Craigslist, or if you're in countries like Sweden, you have Blockette, where you would be surprised with the kind of gear that shows up on those sites. They're definitely worth checking out. Now clearly buying used isn't all good, right? There are going to be some compromises, so let's talk about that now. As a seller, you want to protect yourself. It's pretty easy to scam people nowadays. So whenever you're selling something, you want to make sure to take a lot of pictures of the gear that you're selling, complete with timestamps. You actually want to take a video of it playing. That way you can prove that you sold it in working condition. And when you ship out the product, you want to apply insurance because the last thing you want is for it to disappear and or for it to get damaged in route without insurance because then you are completely screwed. Now, all also, as a seller, when you're selling something that's very expensive and the person comes to you to give you cash, in other words, it's a local pickup, I know this sounds crass and weird, but you want to take them to the bank and deposit the cash right then and there to make sure it is real. Again, I know it sounds awkward, but trust me, this is a smart way to go. Now, as a buyer, you need to leverage your expectations. For example, sometimes you just don't know what the condition of the product is going to be like until you have it in your hands, which is why it is so important to purchase from people that have good feedback in their profiles, especially when you're buying on Audiogon and Audiomart. Next, when you're buying older equipment, say 15 years or older, then yeah, you know what? Odds are that component is going to require service and not too long. Now, servicing these old components can be expensive. It can cost you anywhere between a few hundred dollars to over a thousand dollars, depending on what it is you buy. And there are some old components that I would tell you to just stay away from, period. Specifically, CD players that are 20 years and older. And that's because the parts for them are no longer made, making it very difficult and expensive to service should you need to do so. Otherwise, guys, it's a great way to fly, but I think we're done with this topic, so let's move on to the next point. Okay, so now it's time to talk about research. Now, as I mentioned earlier, many of us are not in a position to listen to something first before we make a purchasing decision. Now, I'm not sure about you all, but whenever I'm ready to spend a lot of money on something that I have no experience with, you bet that I'm going to do just a little bit of research. So for this section, I'm going to share two parts of my process with you all in the hopes that it will help you out in your own process. So the first thing that I do is that I consult a number of different opinions. I never take just one person's word for it, no matter how much I like them. So I'll check out what a lot of reviewers have to say, and then I'll check out what a lot of own owners have to say as well. And that leads me to the second point, which is as I'm doing this research, what I'm looking for is consistent feedback regarding the performance of the product. Because when most people are saying the same general thing about the product, that gives me a good idea as to what I could expect if I were to bring it home for myself. Now, to be clear, what I am not looking for is somebody's emotional reaction. I don't care whether or not they love it or hate it. And let me give you an example as to why. So let's just say I'm in the market for a set of speakers and I'm looking through reviews and one person says, I love the treble, it's lively and energetic and it sounds like real life. Cool, that means nothing to me. All that tells me is that, okay, the treble is bumped up. And then I move on to another review and they say, I hate the treble. It's bright and harsh and fatiguing and it makes me not wanna to listen to the speaker. 
Cool, I don't really care because what that tells me is the same thing. The treble is elevated, which means if I buy those speakers, I will likely experience elevated treble. And to me, that's where the value is. Now, before I sign off though, it's clear to note that it's okay if you have somebody that you trust implicitly. Maybe it's a close friend, maybe it's a retailer, a family member, or even a reviewer. If you found that they time and time again, just nail your expectations. And when that person tells you you should buy something and you do it, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's not how I go about doing things, but there are people who go about it that way. And again, if it works for you, that is totally cool. So now let's move on to the next topic. Okay, so this next bit is something that none of us want to hear, but is nonetheless relevant to buying hi-fi today in 2021, which is you may need to be a little patient. I know, I know, it's a dirty word, especially in today's instant gratification society to where you just give somebody your money and then get your stuff in a week or two, but that's the situation that we're in. And you can blame 2020 for that. As most of you know, 2020 was a chaotic year. It forced a lot of people to stay at home. And because a lot of people were staying at home, they put their money towards gear that you would use and enjoy in your home. In the case of the audio industry, things went crazy. It was a banner year for most audio companies. And now we're dealing with the fallout of that today in 2021 via a shortage of parts. So a lot of the parts that go inside of your gear, DAC chips, switching devices, transistors, capacitors, transformers, a lot of that stuff isn't even available right now. And that's because the manufacturers that make it are so backlogged. Material costs have gone up. A lot of those manufacturers are now saying, hey, supply and demand. So they're charging a lot more money to the audio companies to get those parts and to get everything assembled. And then there's also going to be the increase in freight costs, which is up to three times its normal amount. There are many companies that are used to paying around four to $5,000 for a container that are now paying anywhere between 13,000 to nearly $20,000 per container, depending on whether it's coming from Europe or China. Things have gone nuts. And to make matters even worse, even when it can get all of that going, once it gets to the port, there's such a backlog at the major ports right now that it could take anywhere between weeks to even a month or two months just for that shipment to be released so it can finally get to the warehouse so the product can be provided to you all. So yeah, we are dealing with that right now. And all I can say is hopefully the whole situation will settle as we move into 2022. But for now, you may need to be patient to get your luxury hi-fi. Okay, it's time to open Pandora's box by discussing measurements, or more specifically, whether or not you can use the measured performance of an audio product to make a wise purchasing decision. Now recently, there's been a surge of interest in terms of how hi-fi products measure, specifically by people who favor more of an objective analysis over something that's subjective and potentially biased in nature. Now in some respects, this is a great thing because when you're dealing with qualified measurements, they truly can reveal why you're experiencing what you're experiencing out of your hi-fi system. For example, some people may want to know, hey, how come my system sounds really good when I'm sitting in one part of the room, but sound really bad when I'm in a different part of the room? Well, measurements can reveal why. They can also reveal things such as why one set of speakers requires a lot of power to get loud, whereas another set of speakers require next to no power to get loud. Measurements can be educational, and when taken by qualified individuals, they can also serve as the fact check manufacturers' claims. Now, this has happened before, specifically with loudspeaker manufacturers, where a lot of the time they'll say that the sensitivity is like 90 or 91 dB, where in reality, it's more like 84 to 85, and this has major implications. So measurements absolutely have an important utility, but can you use them to make a smart purchasing decision? And this is where the answer gets a little bit more complex because you see, when it comes to purchasing high-end audio gear, it's not always just about performance. In fact, for most of us, there are many other variables to consider such as the features, the look, the reputation for reliability, the reputation for service and support, after sale value, and for some people, it's going to be its measured performance because it's a psychological need. When you're spending your hard-earned money, some people want to know that that money is going towards a conventionally well-engineered product, and there's nothing wrong with that. But determining whether or not that means something to you requires experience. It requires you to compare something that measures well to something that doesn't measure well. Now, all I can do here is to reveal what my journey has been like. Now, I've owned a lot of super expensive studio monitors that measure absolutely sublimely. Now, when I compared them to products that didn't measure well, I noticed that, huh, even though those are conventionally well-engineered products, 
they don't make me happy. They don't make me want to sit down and listen to music. So for me, a well-measured product doesn't really translate into anything meaningful when it comes to making a purchasing decision. However, for other people, it's going to be different. Now, before I sign off onto the next topic, I need to make it clear that just because you're looking at a graph doesn't mean it's a fact. Yes, it's objective and free of opinion, but when it comes to measuring audio gear, especially from somebody who reveals a spectrum of gear like speakers and amplifiers, it's difficult. There's a lot of tools to do the job. There's a lot of different processes. There's just a lot of complications that go into coming up with these measurements. So as I said earlier, what you're looking for when you're in the research phase is consistency. Look at one set of measurements and how they compare to another independent publications and look for some consistency. Once you find that, now you have something that's going to be just a little bit more reliable. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the last topic. Okay, so lastly, look guys, this whole thing's supposed to be for fun and it's easy to turn it into something that it's not. And I found that the best way to continue having fun is to just leverage your expectations and to understand and accept that there is no such thing as the perfect system that can do it all. And there's no such thing as the best individual component, at least subjectively speaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that many YouTubers in particular love to put the word best all over their videos, but that's a sensationalized title designed to draw your attention. You can hate the player all you want, but that's the game and it works. So ultimately, that's just the whole point though, is to try out different components to see how you react to them. And when you find a system that encourages you, that inspires you to just sit down and to listen for hours on end, that's when you know you have a winner. In fact, that is a really good time to just step back, get off the merry-go-round and enjoy what you've created and how your music sounds through that specific system. That's the goal that we are all essentially chasing for. So on that note, guys, I have nothing else for you, at least not for this video, but hopefully you nonetheless took something away from this that was positive. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.